everyone. I'm Casey Bonet. And I'm Caitlin Burke. And welcome to ECLAG Chat, where we chat a big city events, fill you in on industry news, keep you in the know with fashion and style, with a focus on jewels and accessories, touch on lifestyle education, and keep you abreast of industry content that will develop both your personal and professional lives. And on today's show, we have singer, um, performer, and what else is she actress. do? An actress. Oh my gosh, I don't know why that went, but we have uh, Sarah Murdoch today, and we're going to be talking to her about all she has going on and the performances that she does here in New York City. But in the meantime, Kaylin is going to take us through um, today's promotions, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, so for the month of August only, Eclad's Head and Jump is having a promotion that is one free hour of setup. So if you have an event and you're worried about you know, setting up and that extra cost of setting up, basically, <laughs> you can get it for free with this month's promotion. All you have to do is call us at 212-644-6445, mention you heard this on the show, and you get your free hour for setup. Yeah, it's, it's, wor it's a great deal. It's worth it. Yeah. And, um, you know, why not? Okay, so we are so excited today. We are going to be speaking with Sarah Murdoch. Sarah is a singer, actress, and a performer right here in New York City. She performs and sings uh, folk music and um, bluegrass music, Appalachian music, like basically storytelling music. Yeah. Which is super fun. Yeah, so I think it's going to be an amazing interview, and so let's get started. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Nice to have you with us today. Oh. We're so excited that you're, you know, you're here to talk yes. to us about all the things that you have going on. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's very nice. Okay, so we, we like to start every show with something sort of personal or fun, like a fun fact about who Sarah Murdoch is and like, mm -hmm. you know, something, what you like to do for fun, basically. Oh, what I like to do for fun? Mm -hmm. um, I love spending time with my cat. I have this really great cat that I adopted from the ASPCA a few yeah. months ago, and um, I just love to spend time with her. She's, I'm a crazy cat lady, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so funny? I, it just, this is like, it has nothing to do with nothing. Thing, but um, I just, you know what? I I know two other redheads. This mm -hmm. is I, it sounds crazy, but I do. I know two other redheads. Not that there's only like but anyway. Um, and they are cat people too. And I yeah. that. so when you said that like that, like I went, mm -hmm. this is so crazy. Like it yeah. seems like redheads are just like <laughs> cat people. I don't, I don't know why. That was yeah. kind of <laughs> random. I know, folks. It was kind of random. Well, we had a dog lady on the show a few weeks ago too. She, was she redhead? No. no. See, I think that the evidence bears out, Ben. You know, if she was not a redhead and she was also not a cat Sarah, person. Now we're on the same page. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that was so weird. I know. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> okay, so you're a performer, actress, mm -hmm. and singer. So tell our listeners a little bit about your background and how you got to basically be like a triple threat. I'm right. <laughs> um, well, uh, what I always tell people is that when I was younger, I really loved the movie The Lion King. It was my favorite movie, and I had memorized the entire thing, and I would just perform it at random, like, the whole thing. Like, I would start in the middle of the grocery store while my mom was shopping, and I'd just, like, start out with The Circle of Life, and I'd keep going. Oh. My poor mother. And so, <laughs> eventually, like, after, you know, like, a year or whatever of me doing this, she um, talked to my great-aunt Susan, who was very involved in children's theater, and she suggested that um, my mom sign me up for some classes with um, the local place called the Pennsylvania Youth Theater. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing shows with them and I really loved it. And then I went to a performing arts charter high school um, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and then got a BFA in acting. And um, as part of all of that, did a lot of dance and voice lessons growing up. So I-, I Very active. Yeah, yeah, very active. And I'm really lucky, I consider myself really lucky that my parents were so supportive and that my parents, you know, even today, like finding out that I'm doing all these concerts and everything, they're like, oh, that's so great. We're so proud of you. You should continue doing this. Just keep oh. on singing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have some friends whose parents are sort of like, when are you going to get a real job and settle down? So I'm always really grateful that my parents are so very supportive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, just to kind of piggyback on what you were saying, like mm -hmm. I feel like you know when it comes to that, when it comes to the more artistic, you yeah. know, um, industries, you know, people think that they're not like realistic jobs, oh, or yeah. you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're not, um, I guess, financially um, as lucrative mm -hmm. as you know most other jobs. I guess. Yeah, I mean, or like even mean, like necessary. Like, right. It's, right, it's right. so funny to me how people will be like, oh, but what you do isn't really a necessary mm -hmm. thing. And I sort of think about the fact that, well, art influences every part of our lives. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you guys know, because you know of all the jewelry and everything, mm -hmm. and the fact that you design your own stuff. Yeah. Um, like, 
every everything is designed everything is has been created or trickled down from you know something whether it's architecture or interior design or fashion or anything like that we're informed by so many things mm -hmm. that just influence our daily lives and so when people say oh yeah art doesn't really matter i'm like except that it does yeah you it know? impacts us every especially in new york yeah. city yeah. oh like, yeah it's like the cornerstone of like you know tourism yeah. Yeah. And new york yeah. 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 exactly yeah no yeah. i have to agree okay so Tell us, um, you know, so you're, you're sort of cemented in your career right now. Mm -hmm. Tell us what your genre or your style of music is. Right. Um, well, I do a lot of things pretty much under the folk music mm -hmm. umbrella, like traditional folk music. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I do some blues, I do some um, Scots Gaelic music, actually, um, uh, English ballads, um, mm -hmm. so just and bluegrass, Appalachian ballads. Um, they, I, one of my favorite things to sing is murder ballads. Um, oh my god! <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. People are always like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. <laughs> and when I hear, that, I, I think I know what it is. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. So it's sort of like, um, you know, it's it's almost like acting, like act, like but singing about um, a murder scene or like a crime or something like yeah, that. Right? Yeah, 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 pretty much. But I think it's also sort of like acted out, acted out in terms of like the, I don't know how to explain it in in like the performance in the performance of it, yeah. so to speak, right? Well, I don't. I don't Acts it out. I mean, there are um, there is a tradition within um, traditional folk music of acting out mm -hmm. songs, and a lot of times people will do yeah. murder ballads. Um, I don't, um, but yeah, it's just a, a, in the traditional sense, a ballad is a song that tells a story, mm -hmm. and some murder ballads are about a murder, either made up or a lot of times based on real crime. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a little bit morbid, so I find them fascinating. Yeah. I, I I don't know. People are always tell me that I need to sing about happier things. But I really like singing um, songs about things that are sad because, I don't know, there's a lot of pain in the world and, and I find a lot of comfort in the fact that other people have gone through that and other people have written about it and that there is this whole tradition of music where it's like, yes, the world can be a terrible place, but we can all deal with it in a shared way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've actually, I've listened to your music and, you know, you have such a soul, like you have such a beautiful voice that even if you're singing about death, I mean, I, I, don't know. I just feel like there's like there's singers and then there's singers. You know what I mean? And I feel like when you can really belt or you can really sing, I don't think it really matters what you're singing about because it, it just sort of comes across beautifully in any way. Right. You know, and that's the that's the feel I get from like you know yeah. listening to. Um, there is a sort of morbidity to it. Like, I could mm -hmm. feel that, but it's yeah. like you could get past that because you, you hear the voice and it's like, wow. Also, like any like, yeah. murder ballads that our listeners might know, I'm sure they're curious of like a song. Yeah, right? Um, I mean, one that I really love to sing is called Pretty Polly, mm -hmm. and that um, is an Appalachian murder ballad that's descended from um, an English murder ballad that I think was based on a true crime. Mm -hmm. And so it was um, an English murder ballad first, and then it migrated over, you know, along with the immigrants into the Appalachians and then it shortened and got a little bit of a different tune and became something else. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like Pretty Polly. Um, there's you know some really great, for, a lot of people have done Pretty Polly. Um, and uh, another one that I'm learning um, is Darling Corey. That's a, that's a great one as well. Um, and then yeah, now I'm drawing a blank on other ones, oh, but those two. should <laughs> listen to some of us if they want to know more. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Performances or singing, you know, right. acts here in New York City. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that and tell us about like some of the, yeah. the cool places that you're, you know, performing at? That mm -hmm. kind of thing? Yeah, well, I've done um, a few gigs now at Parkside Lounge, which has been really great. It's a, it's a, I love the fact that Parkside Lounge, the front bar section of it, is feels really divey, and mm -hmm. then you walk through this doorway, and then there's like this little cabaret room with a little stage and everything. You can kind of imagine like, I don't know, like some lady in glittery red dress just like dancing around back there yeah, yeah. at least that's what i think every time i go back <laughs> so you're gonna be performing there i'm gonna be performing there august 12th cool it's gonna be the next time that i'm gonna be there i believe at 9 p.m is the next 
show. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I've also uh, sing a lot at Jimmy's Number Forty Three. I did uh, a concert there, but um, I'm involved with a, a folk singing um, open sing uh, known as Exceedingly Good Song Night, and they sing a lot at uh, Jimmy's Number Forty Three mm -hmm. and uh, now at Jalopy down in Brooklyn. Um, and that's really how I got back into folk music, because I was into it in high school, and then I went to college, and people were like, God, you are so weird, we can't handle it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, I was like, nobody else likes this music, so I guess it's just like my weird thing. And then I started um, taking class with uh, this guy named Ken Schatz, or Ken Schatz, sorry. Um, and uh, he hosts it, and he invited me to go, and I got plugged back into this whole community of people in New York, and you know, also Massachusetts, and all across the country, who really enjoy this kind of music and, and share songs, and are all about educating people. Yeah, awesome. I love folk music. I love the yeah. like story. Yeah, I like the sound of mm -hmm. it too. Mm -hmm. I like indie folk is what I'm super into. Oh yeah. yeah. What's mm -hmm. an example of that? I don't know if I. Nothing, nothing Nothing. you'd have heard of. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Again, folks, we have established that Kaylin is the cooler of the two of us. I know. She, she doesn't even know One Direction songs. So <laughs> well, I don't know any of One Direction songs okay. either. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you, guys, you, guys, yeah. you guys share that. Okay, so are there any projects or collaborations coming up that you're really excited about? You want to yeah. let our listeners know about? I'm really excited about um, the people I'm going to be collaborating with for my next concert because I love to have people come and perform with me as well. So um, Elise Yulo is going to um, play the guitar. She's a really talented guitarist and um, does some really good covers of things but also writes her own material. Mm -hmm. um, so she's going to do a little set. And then uh, Mike Tedesco is somebody that I met through a couple of mutual friends, and he plays the piano, really talented. And he's also a singer-songwriter, but he's going to play some stuff with me, so we might collaborate on, like, I don't know, a duet or something, which could be fun. So tell us, um, what sort of kind, what inspires you? So, you know, you have this really cool story, mm -hmm. and you're involved in, like, what sounds like a lot of fun. Like, what inspires you to continue to do this? I think... Um, other people really inspire me mm -hmm. like um, you know when I'm researching music um, and researching the songs and learning about them and, and listening to different recordings of people singing them and, and how different they can be mm -hmm. I find that really inspiring because it's like wow you know even though this song was written you know a couple hundred years ago whatever it it's not stagnant because look at look at the many different things that people have gotten out of it um, and so that to me is like is, is like one it, it inspires my imagination mm -hmm. and, and how I can what I could bring to this song like what I can bring that's different and then um, the other thing is that it makes me think that this whole singing tradition does still have something to offer to people you know mm -hmm. that these stories are so universal that they're still able to impact us and um, make us feel things which is you know what I want for my music I want people to leave it having having felt something having been moved in some way of course um, or just like having had a fun time yeah. you know yeah awesome so that kind of ties in with our next question like what you want your contribution to music oh, yeah. to be yeah you that, basically yeah. answered it that's basically it yeah I want I want people to have to have felt something um because I I love music I don't know if you guys would know that but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I think we kind of know did you pick that up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I've gone, everybody goes through hard times in their life, but I've found that music can really help me no matter what mm -hmm. kind of mood I'm in. You know, like, whether I'm feeling happy and I'm, like, putting on my makeup and getting ready to go out, or, like, if I'm having a really hard day and I want something to pick me up or something that I can just, like, completely wallow in the feeling for, yeah. um, I find that music is one of the best things to... Um, feel whatever it is that I'm feeling mm -hmm. you know it's something about somebody else being able to express themselves through sound helps me to be able to express my own feelings yeah in a um, yeah in like a transitive way and so if I could ever do that for somebody else I would feel very proud of myself um, to be able to help somebody else process whatever it is that they're going through that day whether it's a good day or a bad day yeah and I feel like just going off what you're, you're saying, music is so transcending. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm, it, it, really it just is. transcends. Bar like, I feel like, mm -hmm. if not everyone, I, most of everyone. Yeah. You know, music for every situation. Right. Yeah. right. And most of us can relate to something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, and, and, you know, depending, again, you know, on whatever it is that you're going through at the time, I'm sure that there's something out there for you to help you through that time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think mm -hmm. music is great for that. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. So if there are people who are looking to be a singer or mm -hmm. an actor or actress, do you have any advice for how to pursue that and what they should, the steps they should take? Yeah, I think um, that finding ways to create your own opportunities is a really good thing to do. Because there are, are a lot of people who might tell you that you can't do things. Like I had people who tell me that I couldn't sing um, because I, I didn't have a musical theater sound. And so um, I actually had somebody say to me, if you don't do musical theater, then you can't sing. And that was really hurtful and kind of turned me off of singing for a little bit. Um, but, you know, just like producing these concerts and um, getting involved with it and like finding ways that I can say, oh, I want to do this. You know, nobody's going to ask me. Nobody's going to be like, mm -hmm. Sarah, you know, you've never performed before. Come and sing at our club. Like nobody's going to do that. Right. So like creating the opportunities for myself has like really helped my confidence and really helped me to find what my voice is and where it is that I fit within the music community. Um, so yeah, just figure out what you can do to make it happen for yourself. Are there like sort of outlets for that kind of thing? Like I, I don't know, you know, mm -hmm. um, just for like maybe people that are listening that are interested in, yeah. you know, um, doing music. Like I'm not sure, you know, is there something out there where like you, you just said, you know, um, kind of you need to figure out what it is that where you've been mm -hmm. yeah what if you don't know like I feel like you know even in my industry or any industry mm -hmm. sometimes there, it, sometimes there's like um, everyone has a niche and, and there's yeah. like different areas to something right? Mm -hmm, right but what if you don't know how to sort of like um, you know, reach that like is there like an outlet or is there some place that people you know yeah well you know that reminds me of something that Miles Davis um, is quoted as saying is that sometimes it takes a long time to sound like yourself mm -hmm. which I think about sometimes I, I, I find that that's something I find inspiring mm -hmm. is, is you know, Miles Davis. And um, yeah, I think trying to find um, people who have similar interests to you. Like if you're listening and you're in the New York area and you do like folk music, then I would say definitely come to Exceedingly Good Song Night mm -hmm. because people there are very supportive and um, they are, they believe that everybody can sing. You know, it's not like oh, you don't sound like so-and-so, or you, or you don't have the perfect vibrato or whatever, so you right. can't sing. You know, you're not technically trained, so you can't sing. It's, right. it's like, if you can speak, then you can sing, and, and that's what people there in that group are always saying. So it's, it's if you're frightened of, of public singing, I used to be terrified of, of singing in public. I used to oh, wow. have so much anxiety, and being involved with that group and like singing once or twice a month in front of people really helped with that. So I, I would say definitely, Try to find some place where you can just start doing whatever it is that you want to do. Whether, right. whether it's like a class or, or a group of people or just inviting your friends over to your yeah. apartment and having like a little artistic session thing or something. Yeah, yeah. a little artistic yeah. session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like just figure out how to start doing it. Yeah. yeah. In the city, there's so many open mics too. Yeah, there's, and open mics. Yeah. There's tons of stuff. I mean, I think mm -hmm. there's like so many styles that are getting popular now. Like if you listen to even like mm -hmm. the top 40, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. no one has the same voice anymore. They mm -hmm. all have like, you know, different types of voices. Yeah. Which is cool. I like mm -hmm. that though. Oh, yeah. Because there was, a, there was a point I felt like we were going through where like everyone sounded like everyone. I don't know, maybe it's just mm -hmm. maybe it's age. I don't know. But like for me, <laughs> I was like, wait, who was it? And they all just like it, you know the music was starting to all start sound the same, and mm -hmm. the voices all sound. And I feel like now we're sort of transitioning out yeah, of that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And I like that. Mm -hmm. I prefer that everyone sound like themselves. Yeah, <laughs> do their own thing. Yeah. You know. Okay, so um, this part of the show, uh, we kind of like we have a series of questions we ask all of our guests, okay. and so it's the most important part to our show. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, do you have any like jewelry or accessory essentials that you think every woman should wear? Maybe like three that you shouldn't leave the house without, or that you are always wearing. Yeah, I think that um, you should always wear something that makes you happy. Always wear something that makes you feel confident, and always wear something that makes you feel like you. Like no matter what those things are, but I think that if you you I like know. that. Yeah. I like that too. Compared yeah. to like specific items. Because yeah, everyone's different. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you know, I don't want to be like always wear a necklace. Because I don't always wear a necklace. Yeah. You know, even though I really enjoy them. You know, it's funny because people will say things like that, but then they're not wearing it. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, so like I'm not I'm not gonna mm -hmm. call anyone out, but you know, they will yeah. say, you know, a woman shouldn't leave the house without earrings and then they're not wearing earrings that day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not calling anyone. <laughs> okay, so are you a lipstick or a lip gloss girl? 
I'm definitely a lipstick girl. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I wear lip gloss, my hair just goes straight for oh, it. It just yeah. gets stuck in there, and then I feel like it gets all over my face. Yeah. Yeah. I I like a good tube of red lipstick. Red is my go-to color. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll take it. <laughs> Are you a lip gloss person? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. But you're part of the Kaylin crew. It's <laughs> Actually, she likes both. I like both. Yeah. So. Okay. No wrong answers in my mm-hmm. book. Yeah. Okay, and finally, share your social handles if anyone wants to check out what mm-hmm. you're doing. What What's next for you that kind of yeah thing? um sarah g murdoch on instagram and on twitter and if you follow me on instagram there i post lots of pictures of my cat doing cute things oh, awesome. so if you're a cat person and you like little kitties just follow and uh, i'm yeah i'm just always I, posting about i her. swear there is a thing with redheads and cats and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna research this i'm gonna find out what it is and i hope this is not mm. like insulting i, I don't yeah. mean it insulting in any way i just think it's I just feel like everyone that I know is a redhead loves cats. I can think of the, my cousin in my family who is also a redhead also has cats. Right? Yeah. I have a friend okay. who's a redhead so who has it's cats. It's a thing, it's, yeah. people. It's a thing, I swear. <laughs> I didn't make it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to research it. I'm going to have more answers about that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So you were telling us about your social handles. Yeah. Sarah G. Murdoch. Okay. Uh, Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. Oh, cool. So um, it, just one more time before we, we actually let you go, mm-hmm. just tell us um, where you know people can find you. Mm-hmm. I, I know you talked about an event that's coming up. Just mm-hmm. won't just repeat it one more time. So you know yeah, for listeners that one. Yeah. What's yeah. Next? Uh, yeah. The next event is going to be at uh, Parkside Lounge on August twelfth, and uh, Elise Yulu and uh, Mike Tedesco will be playing with me. It's going to be great. Yay! Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was so much fun. Yeah. Hopefully, you'll come back again and yeah, we'll talk some more cat stuff. I'll have, <laughs> I'll have like the whole like science yeah, like behind a, like it. Like a chart and I like will. flows. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we'll establish <laughs> that. Okay, guys. So we're gonna take a quick break, and when we return, we will have the designer feature event and news for the day. So we are back with the designer feature of the day, which is the silver leaves necklace by designer Sarah Cavender and. Casey has worn it throughout the show, and I had not seen this piece before today. I really love it. It's super fun. It is an 18-inch drop long barrel chain necklace with mesh sleeves, and so it's the barrel chain is from five to eight inches, and the necklace is silver, and the leaves are silver with charcoal edges. So a nice fun piece. Oh, the edges are charcoal. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like a cute little detail. It's mm-hmm. like from afar, you can still see it. Yeah. It's almost like what they, what they call it when you do the nail thing at the... Oh, like ombre. It's ombre, ombre. exactly. Totally, the leaves are totally ombre. Yes. So statement piece, but also classic, you know, with the silver. Yeah, and then what's also cool about this piece and why I it's like one of my favorites is because it's reversible. Oh. So because um, this particular necklace, it has the uh, extension in the back, mm-hmm. and so you can extend it wear it backwards and if you're wearing a, a deep v in the oh, back okay. you can have this hand. it's so sexy it's beautiful like that like, you know that's i prefer so it on the back than i do in the front yeah that's it's really it's nice. like really in style right now yeah too, is wearing like the back necklaces mm-hmm, mm-hmm. oh that's awesome so it can go both ways that's super cool so if you're looking for a necklace to go with a low back dress yeah this is it and it's, it's multifunctional eclat.com handcrafted as always yes go get it guys today yeah. <laughs> okay guys so we're going to jump right into uh the news for today and so in today's news national retail federation of the nrf said that retail sales for 2016 are now expected to grow 3.4 percent over last year's um you know projection of 3.1 percent for this year so last year, I kind of said that a little backwards, but what I mean to say is that last year they projected that for this year, for 2016 year, uh, it would be a 3.1, um, you know, percent grow or increase, but in, you know, instead they, they're noticing that things are slowly rising or it's a little bit higher, so it's, it's a projected 3.4 percent than the original 3.1 they said it would be. So online and other non-store sales, which are included in the overall figure, are expected to increase 7% to 10% year over year rather than the 6 to 9% that they previously forecasted. 
Retail sales in the first half of 2016 performed at a solid pace, growing close to 4% on a year-over-year -year basis, according to NRF calculations, which exclude automobiles, gasoline stations, and restaurants. NRF expects gross domestic product to grow between 1.9% and 2.4%. That's a good story compared to usual. I know. I know. I feel like we're like the doom and gloom, uh, you know, broadcasting. <laughs> but usually things are like, you know, getting lower percent yeah. sales and stuff. So this is good. It's good. It's good. And it's good. You know what, what makes it even better is the fact that the holidays is coming. So if they're projecting this, then that means that we, we should have oh, yeah, a really yeah. good holiday season, right? Exactly. So fingers crossed. This is also good news. And I'm, I'm super excited about this. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon and the British government have announced a partnership to test the e-commerce giant's aerial drone parcel delivery. And I've seen it on Facebook. Did you? I don't know if it was Amazon. I've heard people talking about it. But mm -hmm. I've seen drones deliver drinks to people on the beach, mm -hmm. which is super cool. You just place an order on your phone and That's the drone so comes insane. with the drinks and just drops them off. I need a vodka and salsa. And it literally does. It's so cool. No, I didn't, they didn't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish. And so Bloomberg, they reported that Amazon's trying to reduce its dependence on logistics companies like you know, UPS, FedEx, those normal shipping companies. So they're you know, trying to move forward with drone delivery, yeah. which would be super awesome. And in a statement, um, Amazon said the UK is charting a path forward for drone technology that will benefit customers, industry, and society. And so I guess this is a big thing in the UK compared to the US. Yeah. So I think they're testing it out there. I, for whatever reason, I don't. I don't know if they didn't get approval to do the testing here. So you know they're doing it out there, and I guess if it's a success, then you know I can say vodka and salsa, and it will appear. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we could try. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the 2016 Lord & Taylor um, Fashion Oracle Award will be presented to Andrew Bolton, curator in charge at the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Art at Fashion Group International's Night of, Night of Stars to be held on October 27th this year at Cipriani Wall Street. Bolton is responsible for curating the Met's current exhibition, Manus Ex Machina. Is that how it's uh, Manus Ex Machina? It's like the combination of yeah. like the two things. Basically. Oh, so is it Manus? And, and I think it's like by. By. Okay. I don't know. I'm always screwing these things up, people. I see the ads me. for it like all over New York. Oh, have you? I have yeah. I read this. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And it, it, it intrigued me, but I, I've not seen it. So, um, okay. So, anyway. Uh, Manus X Machina, or Machina, I don't know how it's pronounced, fashion in an age of technology, and also curated uh, the record-setting Alexander McQueen Savage Beauty exhibition. Previous Oracle winners were um, have included fashion editors like Glenda Bailey and Deborah Needleman and singer Justin Timberlake. Pretty cool. Yeah, those exhibitions have been super popular, too. Yeah. I know the... Um, the other one that you mentioned, that's in a clean one. Right, I'm really familiar with that. But this, I, I, the one that I can't seem to pronounce, pronounce correctly, the machina <laughs> or machina. <laughs> I, listen, guys, I have a degree in English. Okay, don't make fun of me. <laughs> um, I've, I've never, I have not heard of that one. But yeah. it, sounds, it all sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. And now for must attend events, the Global Citizens Festival is coming up this September. It'll be September 24th at 2 p.m. And it's set to bring in a whole army of citizens to the Great Lawn in Central Park. A huge space, so perfect for an event like this. And so headlining the festival this year will be Rihanna, Kendrick Lamar, Ooh. Selena Gomez, Major Lazer, and Metallica. So super huge names. And then also guest performances by Usher, Coldplay's Chris Martin, Ellie Goulding, Eddie Vedder, Yandel, and Yusuf Cat Stevens. And it'll be hosted by Chelsea Handler, Hugh Jackman, Neil Patrick Harris, Seth Meyers, a bunch of names that you guys have probably all heard of. <laughs> and so if you want to see any of those people, like whether they're hosting, singing, it'll be a super cool event. You yeah. can get your ticket at globalcitizen.org. Yeah. Okay, guys, sounds fun. Maybe we can meet you there. All right, so we are going to jump into our very next segment, Girl Talk. See you there. Girl Talk. Okay, guys, we are back with Girl Talk. I'm Casey Bonane. And I'm Kayla Burke. And today, we're um, just, it's just two of us today. Both uh, Sarah and Arafili are uh, out today. They're sick, and, you know, they'll be back next week, as usual, to join us for the usual Girl Talk. But for today... Kayla and I are going to do our thing. Okay, so on today's Girl Talk, um, I have picked the subject. You know, every week one of us girls have a topic, and my topic today is the controversy around the uh, Miss Florida, um, well, actually the pageant, 
and Miss Florida losing her crown 24 hours after winning. Okay, so I'm gonna read you uh, what you know was in the news and then we'll take it from there. So beauty pageant contestant Genesis Davila was stripped of her title as Miss Florida USA 2017 less than 24 hours after it was awarded to her on July 23rd. Uh, Davila violated the competition rules by using a professional makeup, makeup and hairstylist according to the organizers. And this is what the organizer said. We have a zero tolerance policy on rules, Gravit told Local 10 in Miami. Whether it's something major or minor, it's all about keeping an equal and level playing field. Unfortunately, our title holder sought an unfair competitive advantage, and that's just not acceptable in our system. She made a poor life choice. Yes, she made a poor <laughs> life choice. That's a little harsh. <laughs> Okay, so um, I don't know. What do you thought? I, mean, I didn't even know you weren't allowed to use professionals. I didn't know either. It like makes sense, I guess. But I mean, I could see where you get a professional. It isn't fair to someone who's doing it themselves and isn't as talented as doing their hair and makeup. Like I have friends, family who do not know how to put on makeup. So. Yeah, I'm one of them. But but you can also get trained by a professional and then go do it yourself. Yeah. So if she was so concerned about that, she should have just learned from her professional friend or whoever was on her team. Oh, maybe she didn't make anything of it. Like maybe she didn't really think it was that huge of a deal. I mean, I'm I'm gonna assume so if she's going to like you know hire someone to do this for her. Yeah. But is the is the penalty or the action or the consequence? You know, does it really warrant her like? being i guess overthrown or yeah, dethroned I should, yeah. dethroned i should um I, I don't know i mean i mean she said she was innocent i read that she said that this was all made up but they they had some proof that her team her like glam squad was in her room when they weren't supposed to be so i, I don't know she thinks she's innocent but everyone says otherwise mm -hmm. i think I mean, if, if I was in the competition and someone else had professionals doing their hair and makeup and I did it myself, I'd be upset. Of course you'd be upset, yeah. So maybe it is fair. Uh, I, you know what? I, I totally understand. I, 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 I do get that. You know what? It is a competition. Everyone should be playing on a level playing field and we should all have, you know, um, access to the same things and the same tools so that we can all, you know, do our best to compete, right? Without yeah. the assistance that we're not supposed to have. I get it, right? But I feel like, okay, it's a pageant. It's like, it's not, you know, yeah. I mean, if she won, I mean, first of all, I, I thought these pageants are, are about more than just makeup and oh, beauty. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's other components, like, like right. the question and just how you walk and your general gracefulness. Right, so. so, I mean, obviously she won because she must have, like, you know, she must have excelled in all those other that's areas true. of... She didn't win because she had nice hair and makeup. Right, and, and so that's how I would, I'm kind of viewing it. I'm like, okay, there's just one, there's this one thing. Yes, it's wrong, I get it, but... You know, there were all these other aspects that she obviously excelled at, and she did well enough for them to like, like for her to even be placed as a finalist, then to even win. So, could they not like, I don't know, give her a slap on the wrist? I don't know, pay a fine yeah. of two hundred and you know, pass go or however. I don't know how that yeah, goes. Yeah. I don't know if it warrants a, a dethroning. Yeah, or even like if they like switched it and made her the runner up or something. At right. least it wasn't like completely humiliating yeah. and you know eh, I don't know okay guys so let us know what you think what are your thoughts about this situation I think that she should not be dethroned and Kaylin thinks that she should be dethroned I think that she should just have a slap on the wrist and you just you feel like it was unfair yeah. and she should be kicked to the curb so let us know what your thoughts are feel free to uh, hit us up on social media and um, even link us here on um, YouTube and let us know what your thoughts about the situation is. But until we meet again, remember guys, love life and wear it well. See you next time.